Yeah, let's, let's stop. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are live for the men's game. Northwest Florida State College hosting the Pensacola State College Pirates here in Niceville, Florida. I am Rob Brown. Jeff McDonald sits to my right, and we are just seconds away from tip of this Panhandle Conference basketball game. Northwest Florida State College sits alone and on top of the conference, and Jeff, with the win this evening, they will cut down the nets as your 2019 Panhandle Conference champions. That being said, they take on a Pensacola State team that is a very game, very athletic, can get up and down the floor, struggling a little bit this year at two and six, but much like we talked about in the women's game, a team depleted by injuries, a handful of players are unavailable tonight. So Pens uh, Pensacola State will work with just two substitutes available off the bench. That is a tough task to come into Niceville against one of the top four or five teams in the country at this level and compete with a shorthanded roster. No, you're absolutely right. It's tough as it is to come in here up against these Raiders and uh, to come in here shorthanded with a team that loves to press and, and get into transition so much it could be a long night just like it was for the Lady Pirates being shorthanded here tonight. So here we go, some off-ball movement from the Raiders. Chris Duarte, Javion Hamlet over to the corner to Duarte, no good. Off to the right, rebound brought in by Tyree Jackson. Tyree over to Noah Morgan. Morgan spots up, but nothing available, so he'll give it back up to Duarte. Duarte to Eric Vila at the top of the key. Vila over to Tyree Jackson with 19 on the shot clock. Jackson with a spot-up jumper. It's good, nothing but strings from the free throw line for Tyree Jackson to get us started. Yeah, Tyree just kind of bobbing and weaving in there and getting that short jumper to fall. And uh, he's, coming, he's coming here tonight again with the combat boots, strapped on tight, ready to ball. So here are the Pirates, again, shorthanded this evening, just two substitutes available. And they are gonna have their work cut out for them. Wow, from range, Mike Madugo, but he cannot rattle at home. Jamie on Hamlet just takes it himself. Left-handed floater, though, just a touch too strong. We got to back out to McDougal and the Pirates. Yeah, you don't see that one not drop very often for uh, Mr. Hamlet. He's typically going to knock that one down. A lot of movement of the basketball around the top of the key for the Pirates. They recognize that with Vila inside and the tallest player on their roster, Bryce Hunt, being a full three inches shorter, they're going to have to avoid going to the inside tonight. There's a pass up to Tyree to Duarte for the two-handed slam. Very nice. Duarte cutting, slashing through the lane. Nice pass and a flush. Duarte found himself in the middle of the lane with no competition between him and the iron. Tyree saw him and just floated it up to him. You're not going to get many players who can jump up with Chris Duarte. That's why he got a look out of the Pac-12, and that's why he's planning to play big-time college ball after this. But we mentioned that transition basketball. One thing I'd like to see out of Northwest Florida State, what we saw last week, platoon substitutions. Keep fresh legs on the floor. Just wear out the Pirates. That's the advantage that you have. Take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see that here tonight. Without a doubt, and that's the beautiful thing about these Raiders, they have such a deep bench. We can make substitutions and not skip a beat. Raiders in that full court man-to-man -man defense here. Tyree Jackson has got McDougal covered up. That's Noah Morgan working one-on-one -on -one with Rafael Diaz. Pirates probing, and there's the Run to the rack. McDougal got fouled by Tyree on the way in, so that'll be a floor foul underneath the basket. Tyree was just a little bit out of position. He disagreed with the call, but got the hand check. Yeah, it looks like he got him a little bit with the body, but then again, you know, Tyree's built like a brick house. You hit him, you're bound to bounce off, so tough call. Shondarius Coward on the inbound, tried to get it over Eric Vila. Not many times that's going to be successful. So here's a second inbound attempt. He's just gonna throw it into the backcourt. Dixon Montero comes up with it out of the Dominican Republic. 
Inside pass and the jumper is way too strong from number 12, Bryce Hunt. Here's Noah Morgan. He's going to go to the rack, kick it out to the three-point line, all the way over to Eric Vila for three. Book it. It's good. The big man with the strings. Continuing that hot hand from behind the arc is Eric Vila. One of those big guys that you got to get on. you got to guard him all over the floor because he can hit it from anywhere. How do you guard a guy who's 6'11 and has a three-point shot that hits more than it doesn't? Yes. Drive to the corner, nothing there. And back up, here's Tyree Jackson on the breakaway. Look out, oh, Tyree with the one-hand slam. There's the breakaway, and he'll go up right past the defender and just throws it down one-handed. Momentum all to the Raiders. They lead 9-0 to start the game. Yeah, this defense so far tonight is just suffocating the Pirates from Pensacola State College making it tough for them to do anything well on the offensive end. No, Morgan called for the foul there. The Pirates tried to force it down underneath the glass and Morgan came up and hit the ball from the back side but caught player as well. First substitution for the Pirates, Rafael Diaz will step off and on comes DeMonte Nelson. Drive step back, kick over to the corner, baseline and take it away. Like yeah, JV on Hamlet. Great job by Hamlet cutting off that baseline drive and coming up with the steal. Pass inside to Vila. Vila to Tyree for three. No good. Off the iron. Tyree's not going to miss very many when he's that open. Yeah, no, it looked pretty. Just didn't fall. Got to keep shooting it. The first game we caught here, Tyree went five of six to start. <laughs> he has absolutely got a shot as... The Pirates are looking to avoid the defense of Eric Vila. Got the mismatch there and up and over, but he can't get it to fall. DeMonte Nelson did everything right to beat Eric Vila except miss the layup. Yeah, there's one thing we know about Tyree. He will keep shooting it until it falls, no doubt. Talked about that. Shooter shoot, and Tyree knows he is a shooter, so even if he misses two or three, he's not going to lack the confidence to hoist another few. Not at all. Inbound pass from under the basket goes straight <laughs> to Tyree, but he just gets out jumped at the rim. Yeah, it looked like Tyree thought he was a big man there. <laughs> was just going to one step it and yoke it. Mike McDougal goes up between three Raider defenders, and we've got a big man down underneath. That's Chris Duarte, who tried to go up with McDougal, came down wrong. Looks like his left foot went one way, his right foot went the other, and he finds himself down underneath the rack. Some trainer assistance coming. Looks like Kane Henry is going to check in to replace Chris Duarte. Trey Diggs coming into the lineup as well. We'll keep an eye on Duarte as he heads to the bench to stretch those legs out. Tyree Jackson is going to take a spell as well. So Kane Henry and Trey Diggs both on. For the Raiders, you mentioned last game that you asked for three threes from Diggs. He came out and went bang, bang, bang within three minutes. Did you have any words for Trey Diggs to start the game this time? I did, I did. Fortunately, like I told you, my son got to go back there into the locker room with him, and I talked to Trey, and Trey was kind of his escort. Speak and of I, the devil. <laughs> there's number 11 from the corner. First three-point effort is good yes, for Trey I, Diggs. I told Trey we're going to up the ante tonight, buddy. Last week I asked for three. Tonight I need five. So we'll see what happens. No pressure, young man. None at all. There's the pass across the lane from the Pirates, and it goes out of bounds. Lost control. Yeeks and Montero tried to find the big man over in the corner, and it went out of his hands and out. So with just under 15 and a half remaining here in the game, JV on Hamlet will lead the Raiders back into offensive action. Hey, this is something I love about these young men and our coaching staff. They really are about the people. And uh, Coach DeMeo came over and hung out with my little boy, six-year-old Joseph, for a minute and got to know him and invited him to the locker room and just a different culture here. I love it. Noah Morgan goes to the rack alongside Eric Vila, hits him with a little bounce pass, and Vila was just collapsed on by three Pirate defenders on his way to the rim, so he goes down. But the foul is called, and he has the opportunity to grow the lead to a dozen with a pair of free throws. First effort from Eric Vila is good. All strings for the big man. The 6'11 Spaniard.
Second free throw is up. And book it. It's good. Both good. And Vila will head to the bench for a spell. Luigi Dubois will check on number 21, making his appearance in the basketball game with 14.58 left to play in the first half. Yeah, Luigi play, played some very quality minutes for us last Wednesday night here in that ball game at home and uh, look to see some more great minutes from him here tonight. Good jumper there from Shondarius Cowart. Just pulled up from the free throw line, extended, and knocked that one down no problem. Javion Hammock calling out the offense over to Noah Morgan into the corner. Kane Henry passes up the three-point opportunity to reset. Raiders working the ball around the perimeter. Hamlet's going to drive and launch up the 13-footer, but it won't go. Rebounded by Luigi, however, and he earns a fresh shot clock for the Raiders. Hamlet alongside Kane Henry up top. Noah Morgan working the free throw line. Kick back over to Henry. Back to Morgan for the three-point effort. Bottom. Count it. Through the can for number four, Noah Morgan. Puts his first on the board. Yeah, that's a good job by Noah Morgan knocking down that first three-point shot. Need to get him going. Mike McDougal, nice little pull-up jumper at the free-throw line there. Tough to defend him. He is the definition of the word quick. Hamlet working left to right. Spot up for Kane Henry. Book it. It's good from the corner. The young man from Great Britain knocking down the tray from range, and the Raiders are hot early. Yeah, look out. We're knocking it down in the half-court offense, getting hot from the perimeter behind the arc. It's going to be a long night, like I said, for these Pirates. Is this going to be hard for them to have the guard as the length of the floor, especially in that half-court set? 20 to 6. The three-pointers are falling. There's very little going wrong for the Raiders so far. As you see JR Raider there working with the crowd. Good crowd for a Saturday night here at Raider Arena. The pet band up in the corner, keeping the momentum, keeping the energy of these Raider fans. Absolutely. Very high. We still have the cheerleaders here from Bruner Middle School representing from Fort Walton Beach. And of course our cheerleaders from Northwest Florida State College. I don't know if you saw their routine there at halftime of the ladies game, but man, some talented young people here at Northwest Florida State College. Three of six from the floor to start of the Pirates, zero of one from three point land. On the flip side, the Raiders are seven of 12 and four of six from deep. You've got one from Noah Morgan, one from Eric Vila, one from Trey Diggs, and one from Kane Henry. So the Raiders spreading the ball around. Lots of love to every player on the court for the team in white this evening. Raiders back on defense. Trey Diggs working one-on-one, -on -one, skips over to the far side and back up top to McDougal to reset the offense with 16 on the shot clock. <laughs> McDougal over to the corner for the three-point effort, and it's good for Shondarius Cowart. Keep an eye on him. He can spot up from anywhere on the floor. Yeah, we're playing a nice, uh, not zone, sorry, but a man defense switching on the picks, and unfortunately we got a bad matchup there on that last switch. Javion Hamlet with the left-handed jumper from the free throw line knocks that one down. Mike McDougal working against Kane Henry, drives baseline, gets cut off, so it's back up to Cowart. Cowart resets, back to McDougal. And there's that quickness we mentioned as he drives baseline, spits it back to the top for the three-point effort. Look at it, it's good. Yankson Montero knocks down the three from the top of the key. Good yeah. ball movement, good shot from the Pirates. Yeah, Pirates doing a great job of being patient and finding the open man and, and knocking it down. Hamlet's going to go left hand and gets it to fall straight through three Pirate defenders to knock down. Watch the left-hand scoop underneath. Yanks and Montero. Yeah, like we continue to say about Hamlet, I mean, when he wants to, he just kicks in first gear and he takes off. Kid always looks like he's been shot out of a rocket so quick, so hard to stop, and he decides he wants to take it to the basket. McDougal back to Cowart. They work the ball around the top. That's DeMonte Nelson. Nelson's going to go baseline for the floater and gets it to go. Good shot from DeMonte Nelson. Lead back down to just 10 now for the Raiders as the Pirates have 
found some offense that's worked, moving the ball around, driving baseline, finding spaces. Noah Morgan can't get the jumper to fall. Rebounded by Cowart, will head back the other way. Great hustle there by Trey Diggs. Almost came to join us here at the table for a moment. Trey Diggs picked off, jumped between the line left and right, was able to find himself right in that passing lane, just couldn't get the feet to stop moving before he ran into the announcer's bench here on our side of the floor. Timeout called 10 point game with just under 11 and a half minutes left to play. It's felt like it's been all Raiders for the most part, Jeff, but the last few possessions, the Pirates have done a very good job pulling the Raider defense out of sorts, finding open spots. Top to bottom, I'm actually very impressed with the way that this Pirates offense has won the last few possessions. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, doing a great job being patient down here and uh, working the ball around, finding the wide open guy out here behind the arc and knocking it down, taking advantage of those opportunities. It's going to be key because when they have those shots, they got to knock them down because otherwise it's going to be a long night with the numbers in terms of only having a few substitutions and these Raiders continue to be hot. You know, they're giving us a, a, their best shot right now. We're still up 10 and it's just 11.27 left in the first half. So a lot of time left. Could be a long night for uh, the Pirates. I wouldn't count on it, at least from what we've seen so far, unless that stamina just falls too far. There's six of nine from the floor to start the game. Two of three from Mike McDougal. Uh, Coward is two of two perfect so far. They're also two of three from behind the arc. Montero has one and Coward has one as well. The Raiders, on the other hand, nine of 15 from the floor, four of six from behind the arc. It's a five to four game in terms of rebounds with the Raiders holding on to that advantage. So statistically speaking, it's a pretty even matchup so far. You know, you look at the big difference up there when you see turnovers. We've got zero for the Raiders, four for Pensacola State College. And, um, and what I'm talking about earlier, it's going to be hard for Pensacola State College to maintain this type, this style of play that they've got going right now, finding the open guy knocking down. They're, they're depending on a guy knocking down a deep three to put points on the board and they're not going to be able to do that all night. Shandarius Coward is going to be fouled on his way to the rack. That foul's going to go against Niceville's own Trey Diggs, so Coward's going to get a pair from the stripe. Can't get the first one to go just off the long iron. Substitution for the Pirates. Off steps Bryce Hunt. Rafael Diaz will make his way back onto the floor. The only non-starter on the floor right now, McLean Charles, number 22. Missed the second one. Did miss the second one. We got a lane violation call. Looks like that one's going to be against Eric Vilas. So the second opportunity at the second free throw for Shondarius Coward. We've got no pirates in there to rebound. We just need to relax and not worry about getting in there so quick. Coward takes advantage of the mistake, puts another point up on the board. We're back to a single-digit lead for the Raiders. Tyree Jackson back on the floor, as is Eric Vila and Chris Duarte. They join Trey Diggs and Luigi Debois. There's Luigi at the top of the key over to Eric Vila. Back to Chris Duarte. Duarte is going to drive. Step-back jumper. Mm. Book it, number five. Duarte with a step-back jumper. That's a tough shot to hit, and he drilled it. I tell you, Duarte is just so versatile. He can do everything well. Step back, you know, taking it to the hole, jamming it, three-point shot, great defense, just all around an amazing ball player. DeMonte Nelson back to Rafael Diaz. Diaz up to Yixon Montero. Montero is going to work on Luigi. Left to right goes up and under. Luigi says, not in my house. Just a slam of a block. You can't be Montero taking out the mascot. Takes out J.R. Raider, and Tyree's there with the pick-me-up. J.R. Raider just got absolutely WWE'd into the barricade there, and the whole team came over to give my man a pick-me-up. Where's the offensive foul? That's what I want to know. Player control. And a block by Sam Baker. Luigi gets a block, Baker gets a block. It's a block party on this end of the floor. That was for J.R. Raider right there, buddy. Payback. Tyree, Chris Duarte working up top. Duarte is looking for some help. He'll fake the baseline drive and kicks it back to the top. Tyree for three. Can't get it to go well off the mark, and it's rebounded by the Pirates. Not a miss that you'll see very often from Tyree Jackson. Yeah, he was kind of fading to the right a little bit. 
That could be a tough shot to knock down in that game. Look out below. The fast break transition. Tyree gets the steal. Sam Baker picks it off the floor. Baker gives it up to Luigi, and Luigi goes one hand slam on that end of the floor. The momentum is clearly shifted back to the Raiders after J.R. Raider gets speared Goldberg style into the barricade. <laughs> the Raider momentum picks up. This one's for you, J.R. That's right, this JR, JR over there at the trainer's table gets I, that's the I think they took him in the back to stretch out. I don't know where he is right now. Oh, there he is. He's he, down there by the Bruner He moved to the other side line. of the floor. He's trying to get out of danger. Absolutely. Trying not to get himself involved in that Royal Rumble match. Yeah, great job by number 21, Luigi, taking advantage of these minutes that he's getting here tonight. Playing great on the defensive end of the, of, of the ball. Got a couple blocks so far and then a flush on that last possession. So making the most of every opportunity he has here on the floor tonight so far. Luigi, the 6'10 sophomore out of Guadalupe, has really the last couple of games become a bigger and bigger factor game to game. The first few games we were here, it kind of took him a little while to get into some momentum. But the last few games, he's really found his confidence down around the block, down inside the paint, and he's become a threat. Yeah, absolutely, with him, coupled with Anthony Mason. And then, you know, from the guard side, you know, we've started to see uh, Sam Baker get in and start making a difference, having an impact, and that's fantastic. 6 of 11 from the floor of the Pirates. 11 of 18 are the Raiders so far with <laughs> just inside 10 minutes left to play. That out-of-control layup, no good for the Pirates. So we reset with the Raiders on the other end. There's Tyree Jackson. Tried to go inside the Luigi, but it's knocked away. I can confirm that JR has now made his way back in front of our uh, our table here, is interacting with a crowd, so it appears that he is going to be good to go for action the remainder of the first half. Because we know the people at home are very interested, <laughs> and they want to know that JR Raider's okay. <laughs> he is fine. Inbound to Eric Vila, back to Chris Duarte. Duarte is looking for Vila, but Vila covered up, so we'll reset at the top of the key. Sam Baker. Tight defense inside the Luigi. Luigi's just going to power his way to the rack. And look at the nice. left-hander from the big man. You cannot ask for much more out of a 6'11 guy. Put your back to the basket, power close, and just go up at the rack. Yes. Got to love it. Big size difference down there in the paint. Just got to keep feeding the big man. He, he and Vila give them an opportunity to work together down there and uh, take control of the paint. Long distance three is well off the mark for Diaz. Raiders rebound. I would be careful. There was a set pick on that last one, and Luigi ended up on defense on the much smaller, much quicker Mike McDougal. So a mismatch that the Pirates could not take advantage of. But the Raiders need to be very careful about switching those plentiful Pensacola picks. Oh. Offensive foul caught against Tyree. He was trying to do his best Luigi impression there and put his shoulder down. But good defense on the inside is going to create the charge call. Yeah, great job on the defensive end. You, you heard me kind of make a little noise because he, he acted that one up. Good job. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. You got a bigger kind of wider guard backing you down. You got to go ahead and take that charge and make it look as though he's muscling you a little bit. No, Morgan, JB on Hamlet both check in. Tyree will head to the bench alongside Luigi to reset the Raider offensive lineup. There's Noah Morgan one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against Yakes and Montero. Pass inside and Vila steals it up to Hamlet. Hamlet's going to have to pull it back out. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, he's yeah. just going to go to the rack. I thought JV and Hamlet was going to reset the offense, but he fooled me and the entire Pirate defense and goes straight to the rim. Yeah, great move. Just kind of lulled him to sleep there for a second. False sense of security, and he takes it right to the hole. Good take from DeMonte Nelson there. Found himself one-on-one -on -one with Duarte and was able to go to the rack and get the right-handed floater to fall. Raider offense resets. Eric Vila's going to hand it over to Sam Baker for the three. No good. Can't get the rim. There's Vila, but he can't put it back. Chris Duarte can, however. The follow-up points for number five. Yeah, crashing these boards hard. Loving it. Got nine boards so far in the game, compared to six for uh, Pensacola State College. Seven and a half left to play in the first half. Raiders lead 34-17. And a foul is going to be called on the floor. That one's going to be an offensive foul against Yakes and Montero, the 6'5 sophomore from the Dominican Republic. 
Pirates need to be very careful here. Montero's got a pair of fouls on him already. He is in key to this Pirate lineup. The problem, as we mentioned, there's only two substitutes available on the Pirate bench. So if guys start getting into foul trouble early, that could have a major impact. We saw it happen with the women's game when their best player, Savannah Walker, left or their best post player, had to check out with two minutes left to play. Yeah, and then you had number 10. Uh, what was that young lady's name for the Pirates? Number 10. Uh, Paul, Samaria Polk, yeah. yeah, she got in trouble early too, created some issues. Javian Hamlet's going to drive a little spin move up to Eric Vila. Vila is going to spot up the three. Can't get that one to go, though. I think the double clutch on that three may have thrown Vila out of his rhythm just a little bit. He thought about it. And you can't. You just got to shoot it. Over to the corner, one-handed pass. Saved somehow by Rafael Diaz. Good body position to be able to haul that pass in and keep both feet in bounds. Long three is good from Mike McDougal, who's been the stalwart for that Pirate offense, brings it back to within 14 points, and it's going to be a Raider timeout called by Coach Steve DeMeo. Yeah, good rhythm stroke there for McDougal. Just a couple dribbles, stepping into it, knocking it down right in Duarte's face. Duarte maybe do a better job closing out, getting that hand up in the face of the smaller guard, McDougal, from Pensacola State College. Mike McDougal has played very good basketball so far. Seven points to show for it, but I got a sneaky suspicion his assist number is going to end up in the double digits by the end of this night. Certainly. On the flip side, J.B. on Hamlet has kind of been a firefly all over the floor. He just keeps popping up in random places and making big plays. He did it as a starter, took a spell. Now he's back out onto the floor to see if he can continue that. Eric Vila, of course, has been a distribution expert at the top of the key. Knocked down that big three earlier. We got the, the offense has run through them, and it's really caused problems for the Pirates. Yeah, we got the big man, 6'10", forward from uh, Decatur, Alabama, Anthony Mason, now in the game for the Raiders. Hamlet with the little floater and gets it to go from about six feet out. That's a third or fourth one of those that he's had a look at the last few possessions. Javian Hamlet is making the middle of the paint his. Yeah, Hamlet's just got such great touch around the rim tonight. So eight points so far on the night. McDougal's three is too strong, so we'll reset back the other way. Hamlet eight inside the Vila for the short range jumper, but he can't get it to go short irons it. Coward's just gonna go right at Eric Vila. Number five, Sean Darius Coward. Just went straight at the 6'11 Spaniard and said, block it if you can. Yeah, you're not going to see that very often. Noah Morgan for three. Spots up and bangs it through. Number four for three. 17-point game. Approaching five minutes left to play as McDougal loses control, but it's gained by Diaz. He saves it from going out of bounds, looking for some help. He'll reset up to Dougal as Lucci's at the score table, ready to check back in. Pick and roll is successful to the inside. Right-hander, no good for Bryce Hunt. You and I both thought he may have slid that pivot foot just a little bit in a missed call, but it doesn't matter as he misses the shot. There's Hamlet working to the top of the key, skips it over into the corner. Kane Henry thought about it, but puts the ball on the floor up to Noah Morgan. Morgan over to Hamlet. He will take the shot. No good, in and out. Can't get any closer to that without it going through. Well, what's that roll around the rim? But it won't go in. Keep shooting it, though, young man. He's on fire tonight. McDougal gets into it with Hamlet. Hamlet was looking for the offensive foul and ends up about six feet out of bounds. So McDougal just pulls up with the jumper from the free throw line. Extended Hamlet still talking to the referee as he brings the ball up the floor. Wanted the call. Yeah, he's getting that arm out there, a little bit of a clear out. So not many guys in this league are going to push Hamlet around. So you want to say there had to be a little bit of contact there potential offensive foul. We'll have to watch it close on the next trip down. Luigi with the turnaround jumper. No, excuse me, that's Anthony Mason. Number 42 with the turnaround jumper. His first action of the night. Jackson on Coward. That's a bit of a mismatch. Coward looked like he was going to have him beat, but yeah. swings it back up to McDougal to reset the offense. Keep an eye on this McDougal-Hamlet matchup. Starting to get a little heated there. Three-pointer way too long for McLean Charles. Here's Noah Morgan up top to Vila. Vila over to Hamlet. Hamlet's going to drive to the inside. Great. 
And Mason gets fouled hard on his way through. Good ball movement via the Hamlet. Hamlet to Mason. Mason went up into the face of a pair of defenders and just draws the foul. He'll head to the line for a couple. That ball movement, Jeff McDonald, is something we've talked about all year long, and that was some of the best ball movement we've seen out of the Raiders down inside. Now, they've actually played, I think, pretty good interior basketball so far this evening. For the most part, they've been able to find Vila up top. They found Anthony Mason down low a few times, but it's been one pass and shoot, one and shoot. That time we saw four different passes on the interior before Anthony Mason went up strong to the rack. That is something Coach Steve DeMeo told us last week they were going to work on. It appears that they put the time in. No, absolutely. Doing a great job of sharing the basketball, looking for one another. What, what's, what's so important with that is not so much the ability to make the pass, it's the individual that's looking to be in position to receive the pass. As I'm penetrating, you got to slide out of the way and make yourself available for that dump down. So they're doing a great job with their spacing and, and creating that opportunity for those passes inside the paint. One thing we've seen so far that I've really liked out of this Raiders squad is the fact that they're taking advantage of the physical prowess they have down low. They're really kind of using Eric Vila almost as a distribution point up at the free throw line, up at the top of the key. But Anthony Mason, Luigi Debois, these guys are going down to the block. They're taking the ball, and they're fighting to the rim. And what it's doing is it's stretching that defense out, especially now that they know that Eric Vila can knock down those long three-pointers and those long jump shots. Yeah. It's forcing that defense to extend, and it's given Mason, uh, excuse me, Anthony Mason and Luigi Debois the opportunity to really play power basketball down on the block, something we really haven't seen a lot of the last few games. No, you haven't. But again, when you got a big man like Eric Vila who can step back like that and just knock it down, let him do his thing, let him get the ball up around that free throw line. You let Mason and Luigi do their thing, get open, work underneath, and uh, get some easy shots under the basket. Raiders are 17 of 28 from the floor, 5 of 11 from behind the arc. Only two free throw efforts. This is going to be number three and four for Anthony Mason, but they are two of two, 12 rebounds to nine for the Pirates so far this evening. But as Jeff mentioned, the turnover battle clearly the victors of the Raiders there. Just one turnover for the Raiders, taking the ball away seven times from the Pirates. That's a nice change of pace for this Northwest Florida State College basketball team. Yeah, absolutely. You know, playing a good, clean first half so far. Low on the foul side of things. Zero or one turnover, like you said. And, and we're winning, winning the rebound battle as well. So great first half. 60% from the field. You can't complain about that. 45.5% from the three-point stripe is fantastic. McDougal looks inside to Bryce Hunt, but it's a quick turnover created by the Raiders. The inside pass, and Anthony Mason just wasn't there. Here's a hustle play by Chris Duarte, but just there too late. The quick pass to Devontae Nelson in transition earns the Pirates a layup. Good hustle from Chris Duarte to get back on defense just a touch too late. Uh, you know me, I'm not a fan of those air passes through the paint like that unless it's someone just wide open or the sea is parted. Um, that wasn't the case there. It's always better if it's not there, don't do it or make that bounce pass. Chris Duarte for three. Knocks down a long three coming off the defensive screen. Well done by Chris Duarte. Back to mm. the corner for another three-point effort. I didn't hear him call glass, but DeMonte Nelson gets it off the glass anyway. Yeah, that one certainly kissed off the glass, and he's having a conversation with Duarte, counting his lucky stars that that one fell in. That was not a pretty shot. He lined up the three, saw Duarte coming. I think he may have panicked that that one was going to end up in row H of the seats behind the bench. Look at Chris Duarte. Fire. My man's just showing off now. The yeah, big guy is. knocks down back-to-back -back threes, and the Raiders are up 20 with 2.18 left to play. Duarte's feeling it. Pirates working the ball around the three-point line, trying to find some opportunity. Baseline drive, kick to Diaz. Diaz up to the top to McDougal. McDougal to Cowart for three. No good off the glass. I think Luigi, uh, excuse me, Anthony Mason may have gotten a fingertip on that ball on the way by. I'll give him credit for the block. Yeah, when the Raiders get in that 2-3 zone defense, it creates some real problems because we've got a lot of length on this team. And so it's tough to get to the basket, tough to make passes through the paint. So... Expect to see more of that 2-3. Good look there from Mike McDougal. Luigi's jumper doesn't go, and the Pirates take a transition the other way. McDougal suckered the defense in and then just gives a little wraparound pass to Shondarius Coward, who gets the point-blank layup to go. Duarte over to Hamlet. Hamlet able to regain control. Back to Duarte over to Kane Henry. He spots up for three. Wow. Book it. It's good. The Raiders are in fuego from deep. Everybody getting a shot at it tonight. 
Kane Henry from the corner, no problem. McDougal and the Pirates trying to get something going before halftime. Coward with the inside pass and one. Bryce Hunt takes the pass from Coward, goes up. He had Luigi on his back who fouls him from behind and gets the layup to go. I'll say this, Jeff. They are outgunned in terms of numbers, but this Pirate team is not playing like they are intimidated, nor are they in any way, shape, or form disappointed by the way this half is going. They are absolutely attacking the Raider defense. There is no holdback at all. Yeah, they are. And like I was talking about that 2-3 zone earlier from the Raiders, you know, it makes it hard to you find some good passing lanes unless you're moving the ball really well, which they did on that possession. Created a great passing lane underneath to get a good shot and a foul. Chris Duarte working the baseline there. He's going to try to spin up and under, and he's going to be fouled in the process. That's going to be a check on the floor. So the Raiders earn an inbound. That is the... That foul is going to go against McDougal. That is his second. And we talked about Mike McDougal, who so far has really kind of been the heart of this Pirate team in this game so far. Chris Duarte wants another one. It won't go, but it's tipped back in by Luigi. He was just waiting for it to come back down and gets the easy knock-in. 20-point ball game. Yeah, great job once again by Luigi making his presence felt inside the paint. And another takeaway by the Raider defense. Here's Hamlet. Hamlet over to Kate Henry. He spots up for another one. Can't get it to go. It's long. Knocked out by Anthony Mason, but Cowart comes up with the ball. Cowart's going to try to go coast to coast, and he does. Fouled by JV on Hamlet. Cowart looked like he got a little out of control, but Hamlet caught him on the wrist on the way up. Yeah, great job of stepping in front by Hamlet there, cutting off the dribble drive, but going up, and it looks like he just caught him on the hand or the wrist. 20 seconds left in the first half. It's a 20-point basketball game with the Raiders on top, and like we mentioned, it's for the most part been all Raiders, although these Pirates are certainly a very game basketball team, unafraid to attack the rim, as we saw from Shondarius Coward just moments ago. His first free throw will not go, however. You know, once again, I'm looking up, and I don't see any Pirates down here to rebound it. I've got to sit down with some of these coaches and kind of understand the mindset behind that. You know, you're down. You, you think you would want to have your guys down there to rebound off of a potential missed free throw. So but we see it all the time now. JV on Hamlet with 20 seconds left to play in the first half. Pirates in that 2-3 defense. Raiders can hang on for the last shot here with the shot clock turned off. Seven seconds left. Hamlet over to Duarte in the corner. Duarte goes baseline up and under and gets the reverse layup to go with two seconds left. Coward heaves a half quarter and it's no good and that's how we will end. The first half, Chris Duarte drives baseline, goes around three different defenders and gets the reverse layup to go. Chris Duarte is having himself a night, Jeff McDonald. Absolutely, and he's doing it in every way possible. Penetrating, dribble drive to the basket, behind the arc, knocking it down from all over the court. So great first half from Duarte. Great first half from the Raiders all around. 56 points. Looks like we're um, once again close to hitting that century mark tonight. On pace for 100. We were on pace for 103 days ago. Came up just a touch short, mainly because by the time we got deep into the end of the second half, the game was well out of reach. Tonight may be a different story, though. The difference, obviously, as we talked about, is the Raiders are just outgunning the Pirates. They've got more players. They're a little bit more talented of a basketball team. With all due respect to the Pensacola State College Pirates, they're a very good team. But the Raiders are showing why they're one of the best in the country tonight. And so far, they're doing everything right. Driving to the baseline, driving to the rack, creating distribution points with Eric Vila and Luigi Bois at the top of the key and opening the defense up. I really, Jeff, have nothing to talk about in terms of what could be done better in the second half. They're shooting the ball well. They're attacking the glass, offense and defensive sides of the basketball. I'm happy with what the Raiders are doing so far this evening. I would say the only thing, maybe they're right near the end of the first half, a few little letdowns on the defensive side of the ball for the Raiders. Maybe do a better job of just kind of hemming that up, tightening things up a little bit in that 2-3 zone defense, cut off the passing lanes, cut off these dribble drives, and uh, maybe kind of tighten that up a little bit. Otherwise, it has been a great first half. We're moving the ball well, 
playing great defense for the most part, creating good transition opportunities. And then when we're getting in the half court, we're doing a fantastic job of, you know, creating opportunities inside, outside, penetrating the ball well. It's just not a whole lot to say. Some statistics for you so far through the first half. The Pirates, 14 of 26 from the floor. They are 4 of 10 from behind the arc and 3 of 5 from the free throw line. The Raiders, 22 of 36 from the floor. 8 of 16 shooting exactly 50% from behind the arc, and they are 4 of 4 from the stripe. In turn of rebounds, 15 rebounds for the Raiders to 10 for the Pirates. 5 assists for the Pirates, 15 assists for the Raiders in the first half. We've talked the last few weeks about how we want to see more unselfish basketball, but you also want to see guys attack the rim. I think you're getting a pretty nice balance of both tonight. No, absolutely. And the number that just stood out to me is, you know, 50% behind the three-point line. You know, everybody getting involved. I think we've got five or six guys that have knocked down a three-point shot tonight. So, great night so far behind the arc. Noah Morgan, two of two from behind the arc. Chris Duarte, two of four. Eric Vila is one of two. Uh, Diggs is one for one, and Henry is two for three from behind the arc. So shooting the ball very well from behind the arc, shooting the ball really well from close range, too. That's something we've wanted to see was attacking the basket, but making sure that when you do attack the basket, take the highest percentage shots that are available. Sometimes that means taking the first shot. Sometimes it means two or three passes under the rack. We've seen both out of the Raiders tonight. Yeah, doing a great job within close proximity, too, not turning the ball over, dropping down the, the bounce pass instead of the air pass inside and just creating a softer, better pass to re be able to be received by our big man underneath so they can do something with it. So great job all around. We're going to go ahead and take our halftime break. We'll come back here in about eight minutes or so, run through the rest of these statistics and get you set for the second half of action as the Northwest Florida State College Raiders host the Pensacola State College Pirates. R.J. Murdoch and the entire cast and crew of Emerald Coast TV are bringing you all of the action this evening. Thanks so much for joining us, whether you're on Facebook, on the website, on YouTube, wherever you're watching around the world internationally, we appreciate your time. He's Jeff McDonald. My name is Rob Brown. We'll check back in just a few minutes, get you ready for the second half of action of Northwest Florida State College Raider basketball. Yes, sir. Vacation, you can count on. Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit emeraldcoastfl.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARaider.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all...
Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. Vacation you can count on. Cheers, Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit EmeraldCoastFL.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARater.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. vacation you can count on Destin Fort Walton Beach Okaloosa Island visit emeraldcoastfl.com this is where you live learn and play Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area this is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARater.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. vacation you can count on Destin Fort Walton Beach Okaloosa Island visit emeraldcoastfl.com this is where you live learn and play Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area this is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARater.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College.
vacation you can count on. Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. Visit emeraldcoastfl.com. This is where you live, learn, and play. Northwest Florida State College now offers a degree in hospitality and tourism, where you can train with a nationally recognized college in a globally recognized resort area. This is where you start building the foundation for your future. This is Northwest Florida, and the best is our standard. Visit BeARater.com to learn more. Did you know Northwest Florida State College waives all state, college, and course fees for all active duty military tuition assistance students? NWF is committed to serving our military. Visit nwfsc.edu or call 850-678-5111 to learn more. Register today to design your future at Northwest Florida State College. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are just seconds away from the beginning of the second half of this men's college basketball game. The Northwest Florida State College Raiders playing host to the Pensacola State College Pirates. Not very good host so far as they have pretty much run up and down the floor at will. It's not to take anything away from the Pirates who have had some offensive possessions where they've looked very impressive, Jeff McDonald. But as we've talked about it a couple of times, unfortunately for the Pirates, they're just low on substitute players, so they're playing from behind in terms of both points and stamina. Yeah, even with that in consideration, these Raiders are just playing on another level tonight. They look fantastic, like we said, both ends of the floor, shooting the ball well, sharing the ball well on the offensive end and doing a great job playing defense. Well, this team, it all begins and ends with how they're playing on the defensive side of the ball. We're having a great night defensively. We're getting into transition, getting some easy buckets, and uh, it, it really makes a huge difference for this Raider club. Nine turnovers created by the Raiders this evening. They've given the ball away only three times, which is a big benefit and certainly a positive over the past handful of games where that number has floated with 20 a couple of times, but just three in the first half so far. So the couple of things Coach Steve DeMeo told us last week he wanted to focus on in the last two games, the Raiders certainly have looked like they have improved in those facets of the basketball game. We are back underway. Pensacola State College will start with the basketball. Baseline drive from Cowart, nothing there. He's going to throw it down the baseline and find... Diaz over in the corner will reset with the offense, and the three-pointer will not fall for Yixon Montero. So here's the first possession of the second half for the Raiders. Tyree over to Duarte, and the ball's tipped away. Jumped into the passing lane, did Rafael Diaz, and Chris Duarte could not get to the ball before it goes off of his hands and out of bounds, and it's a turnover by the Raiders. So soon as we brag a little bit during the half, the first possession's a turnover for Northwest Florida State. Yeah, something I noticed on that last possession for Pensacola State College on the jump shot, nobody hit the glass for, for Pensacola State College, and that would just tell me that, A, either they're just already gassed at the beginning of the second half here, or there's just not a lot of focus um, on the part of the, uh, the Pirates from Pensacola State College because you don't just leave the paint empty and not take a shot at a rebound. Given Hamlet gets the turnover, goes coast to coast, and ends up one-on-one -on -one with Shondarius Coward. He is fouled by Coward going up for the layup. He cannot get it to go, so Hamlet's going to have a chance at a couple of free throws and knocks down the first of two. You know, one of the things you and I like to talk about and pick at with some of these kids, it's, it's the shoe game, all right? And so tonight, I'm looking at Hamlet. He stepped up. I think every ball game, Hamlet's had a different <laughs> pair of shoes. Tonight, he's wearing those new Kobe's, and uh, they're pretty fresh. I got to say, those are, those are kind of 80s retro looking. You I'm know? digging they, it. I'm they digging got it. the gray, but the neon yellow, the neon pink, the neon blue. Is the long three is knocked down from Mike McDougal. Tyree out there with those hiking-looking Jordans. <laughs> I gotta say, everybody else, uh, Noah, Noah Morgan with the kind of faded out pastel green and light orange. I don't hate those either. Nah, those look new for him. He's uh, Trey Diggs has been rolling those for a few weeks now. So 
Uh-oh. Corner three knocked down by Rafael Diaz, and that's back-to-back three-pointers from the Pirates, now back within 17. Yeah, the Pirates, they've had a few little surges here in uh, the first half and then now the second half where they get down and they get some open looks and they're knocking down these threes, but then they tend to kind of fall back into that, that lull and uh, the Raiders get back up big. We'll see Looked what happens with a crossover over to Vila for three. Bucket, it's good. The big man's got his second tray of the night. Eric Vila from the corner. We've seen him launch threes all year, but I think that's the first one from that spot down in the corner. He's usually up at the top of the key running through the offense. That almost looked designed for Eric Vila that time as McDougal knocks down another layup. Yeah, McDougal doing everything he can to try to keep the Pirates somewhat into the ball game. Duarte was looking for the give and go with Vila, couldn't get it, but the quick takeaway, and there's Duarte Ooh. up and taken down hard underneath the rack. Quick takeaway and a nice little give and go between Duarte, Tyree, and Eric Vila before Duarte took the brunt of that collision in the air and went down hard to the floor, but he'll head for a couple from the strike. Yeah, definite hard foul there, but you don't want to give up an easy bucket if you're the Pirates, so. First foul on Bryce Hunt for the Pensacola State College Pirates as Duarte's first free throw rattles in and out. Second one is long and brought back down by Pensacola State, but Noah, oh, Noah Morgan was fighting hard for the rebound, but off the fingertips and back to Mike McDougal, who bring Pensacola back down the length of the floor. That's not something you see very often where Duarte steps up and misses both ends of a two-shot foul. Coward with the long jumper. It won't go. Tyree Jackson with the rebound up to JV on Hamlet. Hamlet back to Jackson. He's going to drive inside. Back up top to Hamlet. Hamlet's going to drive right to the middle. Ooh. Went down hard to JV on Hamlet. Ended up one-on-one -on -one with Bryce Hunt, and Hamlet is still on the ground. He's going to get a little help from Tyree on his way back up. Looked like Hamlet was going to try a little floater right down the middle of the lane, but Hunt got into position first, set his feet, and that is going to be a charge foul called on JV and Hamlet, who's kind of stretching out that left arm and grimacing just a little bit as he does. So we'll keep an eye on number three moving forward, see if that impacts him at all. But... JV on Hamlet called with the foul. That is his second of the afternoon. Yeah, that's a dangerous situation right there. McDougal looking for the inside pass to Bryce, and it was no good. That inside pass to Vila is just too far. Back to Duarte. And a travel called against Chris Duarte, who decides to throw it down, and he is going to get teed up for throwing down the dunk. Called for a travel and then decided to just go ahead and continue the play anyway, and the backside official is going to put a technical on Chris Duarte. Coach Steve DeMeo not happy. He's saying he didn't hang on the rim. He was just yeah. going through with the basketball play, the crowd giving the officials some boo. But the reality is to play devil's advocate, Jeff McDonald, when you get a foul call and you go throw down, it can be considered taunting, I guess. No, I, I don't. Maybe it's <laughs> almost... Don't, I don't understand that one at all, really. It's not like Duarte did anything in the face of anybody from Pensacola State College. It maybe, uh, I don't know, he got his feelings hurt at halftime. There's a play sure. from earlier. There's Jamie and Hamlet who goes in, and you can watch him. He just kind of gets caught up with number 12, Bryce Hunt, and goes down hard right onto his chest. Yeah, and Bryce Hunt just barely outside of that, you know, that inner circle there underneath the basket where – you know, if you're outside of that, it's a charge. If you're inside of it, you know, it's a block. But that's still kind of a dangerous situation. It looked like he was already kind of leaning back to me, which you're going to get someone hurt like that. So stand up straight, take the charge. You don't have to start leaning back and do your acting job a little early. But Coach DeMeo still having words with the official who called the technical just a moment ago on Chris Duarte. J.B. on Hamlet working one-on-one -on -one with Rafael Diaz. Diaz back up to Cowart, 10 on the shot clock. Cowart's going to kick it over to the corner. Drives to the baseline, back up top, and finds its way inside for the travel call. That is Bryce Hunt. Pirates doing a nice job working the ball around the rim down there, but just a little out of control was Bryce Hunt, and that's another turnover. Still kind of scratching my head at that tech call. <laughs> just doesn't make any sense. 
was all in all, it's been a clean game. You know, it's a, a big point difference here, but in terms of fouls and just attitude, it's been very clean. Hamlet back to Tyree. Tyree fakes the three. Step back jumper. Can't get it to go. Eric Vila for the putback. He can't get it to go. And finally rebounded by Rafael Diaz. Second chance effort from Vila, but he just couldn't find the touch. Yeah, we're struggling a little bit from the field so far in this second half, but it's still early. Shot 54% from the floor in the first half, 57.5% overall as Javion Hamlet gets the running left-hander to go. That's a tough shot going across the goal and up with the left hand. Yeah, he's got such a nice little runner, that little teardrop touch. Nine times out of ten, he's going to knock that one down. McDougal goes left, kicks it out to Montero. Montero goes baseline, was looking across the line, but the pass across the paint was kicked out of bounds by the Raiders, and it'll stay a Pirate basketball. Yeah, I look to see the Raiders uh, kind of step up this intensity on the defensive end of the ball, create some turnovers, and get some transition buckets, kind of get the, get the show rolling again here for the Raiders. Step back jumper is no good for Montero. A foul called against Rafael Diaz, I believe, is going to be a Raider basketball. Now that one's going to go against number 12, Bryce Hunt. That is his second foul of the afternoon. Substitutions taking place for both teams. We're going to see Luigi make his way back onto the floor. He'll replace Tyree. Tyree struggling with the shot tonight, which is not something we've said all year long. This is really the first night that Tyree seemed to off with his jumper. Yeah, it's not often that he's shooting a, a low percentage from the field, but he has struggled a little bit tonight. Um, take a break, maybe pop back in and find it. 15 minutes left to play here in the basketball game as the inside pass from Eric Vila to JV on Hamlet. Hamlet goes up, wanted a foul as well, doesn't get it, but converts the layup. And wow, the Pirates right back the other way. Good hustle play there from number four, DeMonte Nelson, with only two non starters available tonight. Is Eric Vila going to go up with the right hand? I think Vila was trying to throw that down to prove a point to Rafael Diaz. Diaz realized what was happening and just kind of swung wildly at the arm of Eric Vila. Diaz did not want to be put on the poster for the evening. No, he did not. I think I would be fouling myself. Your options there were tackle Eric Vila or get dunked on hard by Eric Vila. <clears throat> he took the former. So Vila's got a pair coming to him from the stripe. First one is Man. off and no good for the 6'11 Spaniard. You see the free throw is going to come down to 66.6% .6 after that miss, but how about my man shooting the same percentage from the three-point line? Two of three on the night for number 10. Feeling it. There it is. Shot is up and good. All strings for Eric Vila on that one. There's Mike McDougal. Bringing the Pirates up the floor quickly to try to get that offense set. Working up top alongside Rafael Diaz inside the Coward. Coward's going to try to spin around, and he does. Good move there around Luigi for Shadarius Coward. Coward's having himself a nice little basketball game this evening. He's got 13.6 boards and a handful of assists to go along with it. Yeah, you'd like to see 6-10. Uh, Luigi, go ahead and send that one into the stands. Eric Vila drives down the paint. Goes up with the left hand, can't get it to fall, but gets another foul and another opportunity to head to the stripe. Yeah, you can see Luigi getting coached up a little bit over there. Want to see him get a little bit more aggressive underneath, you know, in the paint on the defensive end that there's no reason that uh, the smaller ball player from Pensacola State College should be able to get that one up over the glass on him. Vila knocks down the first of a pair. Opportunity to stretch the lead back up to 20 with this one. And he does. Fourteen minutes left to play here in the basketball game. We are live at Northwest Florida State College. Raider Arena, you're home to this matchup. Rob Brown, Jeff McDonald with you this evening. 
Pass into the corner. It's going to be swung around. Not sure why McLeon Charles didn't just spot up from three, but he decides to kick it over. It's a turnover, and down hard goes JV and Hamlet for the second time in this half of the basketball game. Was trying to get that left-hand leaner to go, but ended up taking some contact and went down to the floor. Shondarius Cowart for the second time was the one that went up with JV and Hamlet, and for the second time, Hamlet hits the floor hard. Yeah, Hamlin only knows one way to the basket. That's fast and hard. So he gets fouled or, and somehow, some way knocked around. He is going to go down hard. Hamlin's first three throw is good. Fourteen points on the night. Make it fifteen for number three. Substitution is. Trey Diggs will step on and replace JV on Hamlet, give him an opportunity to go work the kinks out from finding his way down to the hardwood twice. Uh, Trey's uh, owing me a couple from behind the three-point stripe tonight <laughs> now. He's got to knock some more down. Timeout called by head coach Pete Pena of the Pensacola State College Pirates. They are shooting 52.8% from the floor and 40% from behind the arc, but like we mentioned, just more and more turning out to be a numbers game at this point as the substitutions aren't there. I'm gonna tell you that young blonde lady on the right side of your screen there, Miss Mary Jane Ross, longtime teacher at Choctahatchee High School. Miss Mary Jane Ross is the reason that I am in media broadcasting. So ladies and gentlemen, you can blame her for having to listen to me for all of your Raiders home games. Sitting there next to her, uh Dudley husband, Mr. Ray Ross, great coach here from the area. Parents of our uh, AD, Mr. Ramsey Ross, great folks, love them, known them for a long time. <laughs> Just over 13 and a half minutes remaining here in the basketball contest. Mike McDougal and his Pirates trying to get something going. He's going to go up and over Kane Henry, but Henry got enough of it to prevent Mike McDougal from getting the layup off the glass. Keep an eye on Mike McDougal. He's one of the few guys on Pensacola that look like they're able to take over the game. He and Shondarius Coward up top are both having themselves a fantastic evening so far. Kane Henry looking for Eric Vila. Luigi is going to come work the top of the perimeter. Duarte inside to Vila. Vila will take it back out to reset the offense with Duarte. Six seconds on the shot clock. Duarte is going to spot up from three. Boom. Bucket. Bottom of the canister for Chris Duarte. Having himself in the evening. That's 17 points and six boards. And a block for number five. Get that mess out of here. Duarte have a night, my friend. And here he goes for two more. Over to Trey Diggs. Diggs from the corner. Oh. Spots up no good. Kane Henry on the rebound. He'll reset up top. Eric Vila skips it across to Duarte. And Duarte is happy to reset the offense with 23 on the shot clock. Yeah, Vila was trying to get the ball inside really quick. Huge mismatch there for a moment on number four from the Pirates, uh, DeMonte Nelson. Luigi was looking for... Chris Duarte on the inside. Duarte went to set a pick for Trey Diggs, and instead the pass ends up right to a wide open official out of bounds. Here's McDougal on Kane Henry. The Pirates have spread the floor, opening up that isolation. The handoff to Diaz, and Henry got a hand on it. Here's Chris Duarte, one on one with Coward. Up to Vila, and he can't get the alley oop to go. Just a little too far past the rim. Back the other way in transition to the Pirates. Rafael Diaz's layup is no good. He saw Kane Henry on his back, got a little nervous, didn't put enough on it to get it up off the top of the square. Here's Duarte working off the pick. He'll go up with the right hand and gets wow. the kiss off the glass. Chris Duarte, 19 points on the night. Yeah, once again, Duarte just putting on a clinic tonight in every which way on the offensive side of the floor. Playing great defense as well. You saw the big block the previous possession. McDougal was looking for Rafael Diaz down there on the block and ended up throwing an errant pass that bounces straight out of bounds. And the Raiders are now threatening a 30-point lead. They have just taken over. The Pirates came out to start the second half and had some momentum, if we're being honest. Knocked down a couple of threes, knocked down a couple of big shots. but. After that, Chris Duarte got hot. He had a couple of big blocks down there on that side, and all of a sudden, the Raiders are way back up top. Yeah, absolutely. Again, like I've said, the energy, the flow, where it begins with these Raiders is on the defensive side of the ball. That's where this motor gets running. 
and they're doing a great job so far in this half. After a slow start to the half, they've really picked up the defensive intensity, and that's made the difference. Just over 11 and a half left to go, and like we mentioned, it's been all Raiders. And I will say this, this is a point where for most games you'd say maybe start going to some of the guys who don't get a lot of play time, but this Raider team comes off the bench quite deep every game. There's really not many guys on the roster that don't see a significant amount of playing time every, every night. There's not a lot left to go to for guys that don't see a lot of action, Jeff. Very true, very true. We do a great job of utilizing every piece that we have over there on the Raider bench. A couple of stats for you as we head towards the middle of the second half of play. The Pirates 19 of 39 from the floor, six of 15 from behind the arc, and four of six from the stripe. The Raiders 27 of 45 from the field and 10 of 19 on the floor, or excuse me, from the three-point line, shooting better than 50% from deep so far. They're also 11 of 14 from the stripe. 24 rebounds, including seven offensive to just 13 for the Pirates so far this evening. By the way, stay tuned after the game is over. If the score holds, which so far it looks good, as we've got a, uh, we've just gotten noticed that there will be a, uh, there will be a celebration after this game, as the charge is going to be called there on number 21, Luigi De Bois, who went in hard on the rack and ends up knocking number 12, Bryce Hunt straight to the deck, so we'll reset with a Pirate basketball. If the score holds tonight, your Northwest Florida State College Raiders will be crowned Panhandle Conference champions again, so stick with us after for a celebration if the score holds, which so far so good for the Raiders. Drive kick to the corner. McDougal's working on that side. He'll go to the rack, kicks it across to Cowart for the three-pointer, and Cowart swishes it straight through. Yeah, good game tonight for Cowart. You know, they're obviously having a hard time tonight staying toe-to-toe -to -toe with these Raiders, but Cowart, McDougal, both fighting hard to keep them in this ball game. 16 somehow, for Cowart, 14 for McDougal, 11 for Nelson are your leaders for the Pirates, but really no one else with more than three on the score sheet. Three-pointer won't go for Luigi. Even he's getting in on that deep range action tonight. Yeah, Coach didn't look too excited about that one. So. A swing pass from McLean Charles. He was looking for, I'm not quite sure who, over in front of the Pirate bench and sails it. If it wouldn't have been for Rafael Diaz jumping up with that high vert off the bench, that thing would have ended up about six rows deep in the Raider Arena section uh, of the uh, Raider Club. Yeah, good to see Sam Baker checking in the game. Let's see what he can contribute. Um, to this game for the Raiders with 10 and a half minutes left here in the second half. Inside pass to Luigi and he just can't hang on. It was a good pass from JB on Hamlet and Luigi just cannot get a grasp on it underneath the rim. So another turnover there. We started the half with three to their 10. It's now 10 turnovers for the Raiders to their 15. Just notice we haven't seen much of uh, Mason tonight in the ball game. I'd love to find out what's going on there maybe some injury issues or what, but haven't seen too many minutes out of him so far tonight. In and out for McLean Charles, it won't go. There's a three-pointer from number 11, Trey Diggs, knocks it down. Yes, sir. I only need three more, baby. And a foul called for DeMonte Nelson as he went straight to the rack. Looks like that one is gonna be against Sam Baker. It is, that is Baker's first foul of the evening, and it'll send DeMonte Nelson to the strike for a couple. Every time I look up, one of our guys are working these officials. I'm talking about in a respectful manner, having a conversation, but man, working the officials. But we've definitely seen some calls tonight that have been pretty questionable, but all in all, not a bad night. So far in the second half, we've got four fouls for the Raiders, six for Pensacola State College, so it has been a, a fairly clean ball game. A couple of substitutions is Anthony Mason and Tyree Jackson will both shut back in. Luigi and Kane Henry both going to rest for a spell with under 10 minutes left to play in the game as the second free throw from DeMonte Nelson is good. Yeah, when we get another break, Rob Brown, we'll take a moment and talk about Tyree Jackson a little bit, get a little background scoop on him tonight as he's our featured ball player. Sam Baker for three, off just to the right. Rebounded by the Pirates, they're coming back the other way behind DeMonte Nelson. 
Nelson trapped in the corner. He'll get it back up to Mike McDougal. McDougal in Trey Diggs' face, and he gets it to fall. Good shot from Mike McDougal. He has 17 points on the night for McDougal. Great ball game for him so far. Not much Trey Diggs could have done in that situation. That was just a long range three. He'll try to answer, but it won't go. Off iron to the right, rebounded by Bryce Hunt. Hunt gives it up to Nelson. Nelson over to the corner of Cowart. Cowart's going to step back for a three, and he got it. Shondarius Cowart with another three. That's going to be 19 for him, 17 for McDougal. Yeah, you can't say they haven't played a, <laughs> a great ball game tonight for these Pirates. They just need a little bit more help. DeMonte Nelson's got 13 as well, but like we mentioned, there's really not much else working for the Pirates right now outside of the big three. Here's Tyree, skips it over to Trey. Trey digs for Trey. Got it! Um, Trey digs from range. Keep shooting it, young man. Diggs knocks down another three-pointer and a timeout called, a full timeout, as Coach Steve DeMeo calls the timeout there. I thought that would have been a pirate turnover, or excuse me, timeout after the long Trey Diggs three. He's got nine on the night. Hamlet 16 out on the floor as well. Absolutely. Hey, tonight we want to feature Tyree Jackson, number one, one of our very talented guards and a young man that we love to watch play. Great energy, great effort every night. Red shirt sophomore, again, a guard averaging currently 8.4 points and 2.9 rebounds. They asked uh, Tyree, what is his favorite TV show? And it's one of my favorites from back in the day, Rob Brown. Mark. Oh, that is Mark. old school. Great show. And the next he said, if you were an Olympic athlete, what sport would you want to compete in besides basketball? The obvious answer is show jumping. No show jumping here, brother. <laughs> ba uh, baseball. Baseball. I would love to see him play a little baseball. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? He said Greece. I like I like he's, the answer. Yeah, he's he's so solid answers here. Do you have any hidden talents? He's a drawer. He likes to draw. Oh, an artiste. What do you think he's doing? Maybe drawing some anime? I don't know. We'll have to find out. And then lastly, <laughs> what is one of your pet peeves? And, you know, maybe this is the answer to why he's wearing these combat boots on the basketball floor. But it says, someone stepping on his shoe. Oh, man. That frustrates the heck out of me, man. Tyree Jackson. Long three won't be good for Nelson. Here's speaking of Tyree and those combat boots, bringing it back up the floor. Launches a three. Book it. It's good. I'll tell you this, if Tyree can get hot from behind the arc, the Pirates are really in trouble. The Raiders have done for the most part without Tyree spotting up deep tonight. If he starts knocking those down, it could be a long night for Pensacola State. Long jumper won't go. Trey Diggs with the rebound. JV on Hamlet's going to kick it back out to Trey Diggs. Diggs spots up. Ooh, can't get it to go. <laughs> Jeff McDonough him. with the premature celebration on the him. sidelines. He sure did. I jinxed and him. And rattles off the right side of the rim. It looked, looked good except for the finish. There's another three from Rafael Diaz, and Diaz knocks it down. He's got six points on the night. 22 of 43 from the floor of the Pirates. They're 9 of 18 from behind the arc. Make it 9 of 19 after that last effort. Foul called on the near side of the floor. It's going to be a push foul. Called against number 12, Bryce Hunt. That is his third of the night. 7-14 showing on the clock. Anthony Mason going to head to the stripe. And the bonus are the Northwest Florida State College Raiders. Front end will not go for number 42. Here comes DeMonte Nelson. He's going to try to go coast to coast and throws up wow. a prayer. And somehow it goes, DeMonte Nelson launches a runner. Have no idea how he got the right angle there, but he has Ooh. look up below. Tyree to Anthony Mason for the long range alley-oop. Look out below. Sean Darius Coward on the other end draws the foul, but it got mighty loud in Raider Arena for just a second. After I thought Tyree was throwing up a shot. Anthony Mason came out of nowhere and the, threw that thing down one-handed. The sneaky oop. Anthony just wanted to remind everybody that he is in the house. 
So here's Cowart. A couple of free throws coming his way. First one short ironed and no good. Cowart's second opportunity is good. All strings on that one. 86-65 your score. Here's Trey Diggs working outside the three-point line back to Hamlet. Hamlet inside to Mason. He'll give it back to Hamlet. Hamlet with the little short range and stop and pop, but it won't go just too short. That's normally money for Hamlet. He's missed a couple of those tonight. Anthony Mason gets another block. And here come back the other way. Hamlet's looking for anybody. Back up top to Tyree. Tyree thought about popping that one, but he instead puts the ball on the floor and resets. 16 on the shot clock. Tyree to Trey Diggs. Diggs over to the corner. Three-point effort. Can't get the roll for Sam Baker. Got a whistle to stop play. It's a timeout called on the floor with just under six minutes left to go and a 65-86 lead for your Northwest Florida State College Raiders. And on the night, we've talked about him many times on a night that Tyree Jackson really hasn't been able to get the three-point shot work, and he had the big one a few minutes ago. But outside of that, Tyree, who has been one of the most important pieces of this offense, has been relatively quiet. The Raiders have done just fine without him. Yeah, absolutely. you got Hamlet stepping up tonight with 16 points. Trey Diggs knocking down three three-pointers tonight for nine points. So a lot, of, a lot of other guys stepping up, kind of filling that void. On the flip side, Shamarius Coward with 20. Nelson has 15. Mike McDougal, who's on the bench right now resting a spell, is threatening to get to 20 on the next made field goal that he finds. You see we got some young cheerleaders in the house tonight for the Raiders. As of right now, you got 16 out of Hamlet, 19 out of Duarte, 11 out of Eric Vila. Nine from Trey Diggs on those three three-pointers. Seven for Tyree Jackson, six for Noah Morgan, six for Kane Henry. Luigi's got six. Anthony Mason has six. The only guy not on the score sheet right now is Sam Baker, who is 0 of 3. All three of those field goal efforts are three-point shots. So we'll see if Sam Baker, who is on the floor for the Raiders right now, can be the last Raider to get on the score sheet and make it an all-around affair for the team in white tonight. Inside of six minutes left to play in the basketball game, the Raiders will inbound. And it is Sam Baker to start this possession. He'll drive to the middle, nothing going, so he resets to Trey Diggs. Trey Diggs back up top to Tyree. Tyree over to Hamlet. Hamlet looking inside for Mason, can't get him, so Tyree's gonna work one-on-one. -on -one. Tyree into the corner for Trey Diggs, 15 on the shot clock. Diggs back up to the top, and it's picked off <laughs> into the little referee. help from the Zebra. Yes, indeed, bad luck for the Pirates is JV on Hamlet's going to spot the three, but it won't go. Anthony Nason with the board. They've got a full shot clock. Got him. But Trey Diggs doesn't want the full shot clock. <laughs> he wants his fourth three-pointer of the night. Another three-piece for Trey Diggs straight out of Niceville. You asked for five. He's got you four, Jeff McDonald. One more will set the goal for two games in a row for Trey Diggs. There's Cowart and McDougal working up top again for the Pirates. McDougal's going to try to do it himself, and he does the right-hander wow. and somehow gets it to go. That foul's going to be on Sam Baker. Props to Mike McDougal. That's a tough shot to get to go up over number 24, and he finds just the right angle to make it drop. Yeah, that's uh, McDougal now. That's 19. He's stepping up maybe 20 here. He just does, man, for his stature and his size to get in there with the big guys and knock down those layups time and time again. And... Uh, Tough ball player, the kind of kid you would really like to have on your team. Free throw is good, and McDougal gets three the old-fashioned way. Five minutes left to play basketball game. Noah Morgan back on for the Raiders, as is Kane Henry. There's Sam Baker. Baker over to Trey Diggs. Diggs looking inside for Mason. Diggs says, I'll do it myself, and he does! There's number five, 15 for Trey Diggs, and they're all from range. <laughs> Trey Diggs has got the sniper sight on the rifle tonight, my friends. He is feeling it. 
Oh, and look to add a block to the stat sheet there. Went up with Rafael Diaz, and Diaz draws the foul. So that's going to be the third foul against Trey Diggs with just over four and a half left to play. Diggs is, again, 15 points on the night, and all of them coming off of three-pointers. And three of those wow. five, by the way, Jeff McDonald, have come from the face of a defender. He's got yeah. guys in front of him. This is not offensive movement to get him open. This is him taking the ball at the top of the key, getting a defender in his face, and just jaying him up. Just popping it right in his face, yeah. A lot of confidence right now from uh, Trey Diggs. Don't be surprised to see another one or two of those go up. Noah Morgan does his best Trey Diggs impression, but it won't go. Kane Henry's there to try to get the rebound, but just can't hang on. Good hustle from Kane Henry, but loses the touch before it goes out of bounds. Pensacola the ball. 92 points for the Raiders, flirting with that century mark for the second home game in a row. As the long three is good from Rafael Diaz. Diaz heating up a little bit here for the Pirates. Morgan calling for an offensive set. You've seen a little less sprint out of the offense of the Raiders. We've seen this the last couple of games, too. Once they get up, they really don't try to necessarily run up the score as Baker with the turnover there. Can't get it over McLean Charles. Charles to McDougal, and we'll reset the offense. Here's Diaz again. We're going one-on-one -on -one with Mason. He's going to go to the right. and Anthony Mason with the no thank you, sir, under the block. Trading spots up again. Boom. Ah. Six. Three-pointers for Trey Diggs, 18 from behind the arc. My man stepped it back. No, sir, not laying this one up. Let's step it behind the three-point line, knock down a three. As good as a layup tonight for Trey Diggs. He has been all but automatic from behind the arc so far this evening. I don't want to say I've inspired him, <laughs> but maybe I've inspired him a little bit. Challenge challenging the young man and he is stepping up to the plate and answering the call. Two fifty seven left on the clock here. Sam Baker hanging on to the ball over to Trey Diggs. He thought about it. He wanted it. Instead he'll drive and an offensive foul called says wow. that he, Official says that Diggs got the arm. Coach Steve DeMeo giving him a little criticism of that call. The crowd doesn't like it either as Trey Diggs spotted up for the three, but that time the defense collapsed, so he tried to go straight to the rack with it, and the official says he wrapped the arm around, so we'll reset with the Pirates. 2.46 on the clock here at Raider Arena in Niceville, Florida. I am Rob Brown. Jeff McDonald is here, and that's Shondarius Cowart with the long three, but it won't go. Pensacola content to just try to catch back up with three after three. Noah Morgan with the turnover, was looking for Luigi on the pick and go. Luigi thought better of going one-on-one -on -one full court defense with Mike McDougal, one of the quickest basketball players we've seen here in Nashville all season long. Here's Diaz, Diaz is gonna go to the inside, pops it back out for the three-point effort, good. Mm. Book it, that's number 22, McLean Charles, and the Pirates are shooting relatively well from the three-point line, they're up over 54% on the night. Yeah, to the Pirates' credit, Rob, I mean, they continue to fight, they have not given up. They're still playing hard. And Morgan and inside down. to Luigi, and Luigi just gets a little reverse there. It wasn't pretty, but it counts for a deuce. Good inside pass from Noah Morgan to find Luigi wide open. It looks like the Raiders are kind of pulling the defense a little bit. We've seen them be a little more tenacious, but there's a quick turnover. Sam Baker's going to get on the score sheet this ah. evening. He wanted to throw it down. He oh, thought about that. it, but... Putting your name on the stat sheet matter for Sam Baker, and he gets it there. Another long three from the Pirates. Wow. Good shot there. How about Yanks and Montero from range? And the lead for as much as this game feels like a blowout is only at 17, though with this possession, the Raiders could cross that 100-point mark for the first time at home this season. And that's how they'll do it. Noah Morgan just with the little warm-up practice, not even a judge, call it a jumper, but it didn't really even leave the ground. He just kind of threw it up there and let it go, and that is how the Raiders cross the hundo mark. Well, you got Noah Morgan standing six foot five inches against Mike McDougal, who on the roster here, they have him listed at 5'9". I think that's a generous 5'9". I'm five thinking nine. he's probably every bit of 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, Huge mismatch there, and uh, Noah Morgan recognized that call for the ball immediately. McDougal's gonna take it out. Rafael Diaz.
Lopez skips it around all the way over to Montero, but Montero can't get the three. Rebound by the Pirates. We're inside of a minute left to play, and the drive reverse layup on McLean Charles is good. 101-84, 56 seconds on the clock. Here comes Morgan Kane. Henry checked in the ball game. Sam Baker is out there with him. Luigi and Anthony Mason as well. Noah Morgan content to dribble the ball for the 20 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Over to Baker. Baker inside to Luigi. Luigi's looking for somebody to move. It's Kane Henry this time. Henry dribbles. He's going to shoot from the corner. It won't go. Rebound taken in by Shondarius Cowett. Cowett's going to hustle down the floor, try to make this game closer than it is on the scoreboard. And he is blocked by Noah Morgan. Put out of bounds by number four with 27.4 on the clock. Just been a great effort all around tonight by these Raiders. Both ends of the floor. Offense, defense. Dugan tried to go right hand, and Anthony Mason said no thanks. Sam Baker said it. This is Baker. how you do it, son. 24 uh -huh. with the two-hand jam responds, and that is an exclamation point on a ball game. Yes, it is. Love to see that smile on Sam Baker's face. Love to see him get involved and make a contribution to the ball game. And that's how we're going to end it, ladies and gentlemen. 103-84. It was all Raiders all night. And your 2019 Panhandle Conference champions are the Northwest Florida State College Raiders. Coach Pete Pena and his Pensacola Pirates. Jeff McDonald, nothing to hang their head on tonight. That was as good as an effort as you could ask for out of a team that came out of here, depleted on the bench, and outgunned on the floor. They gave the Raiders everything they wanted for a good chunk of the night. But when it came down to it, too much three-point shorting, too much interior passing, everything the Raiders wanted to do, they did and they did very well. Not a lot of critique, not a lot of criticism for these Northwest Florida State College Raiders. Certainly not on a night that they become the five-time consecutive Panhandle Conference champions. They will cut down the nets this evening. We got Jeff McDonald taking our handheld microphone over to the bench. He's going to go see if he can track down Coach Steve I think, yeah, almost got him. Coach Steve DeMeo's over on the other side as the Raiders are celebrating at midcourt. Again, five-time conference champions consecutively are the, uh, are the Northwest Florida State College Raiders working on getting Coach Steve DeMeo set up over there alongside Jeff McDonald. And as soon as we do, we'll send it over to Jeff for a little post-game sideline interview. Coach has got to put the jacket on up top, and then we'll give Jeff just a couple of seconds to interview the coaches. Queen right, plays throughout the arena. Let's send it over to Jeff McDonald. Great game tonight. 103-84 win over the Pensacola State College Pirates. Knocking down another Panhandle Conference Championship tonight. Sealing that five years in a row. How's that feel, Coach? Uh, feels great. You know, our guys have uh, worked really hard since the summertime. And, you know, it's good when you have uh, good things happen. We've got a really talented group of guys. Um, as you can tell, I'm fortunate to coach these guys. Absolutely. Hey, great game tonight all the way around on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball. I've always said watching you guys play that it all starts with the defense on this team. Getting us into transition. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're really quick and long and athletic, and uh, unfortunately the percentage didn't show tonight. They shot about 50% from two and three. Very good team. Pete Benny does an incredible job with guys, shorthanded. Uh, but we were lucky that uh, our offense was clicking today. Absolutely, Coach. Hey, congratulations, Coach. Get over there and celebrate with your squad. Yes, sir. Thank you. Back to Rob. There you have it. Jeff alongside head coach Steve DeMeo as he has coached this team to five consecutive Panhandle Conference championships. A heck of an effort this evening for the Northwest Florida State College Raiders, and they are cutting down the nets here at Northwest Florida State College Arena. Everything went right tonight for the Raiders. They had the Pensacola State College Pirates depleted, and they took full advantage of that fact. So well done to this Raider basketball team. There's not much you could have asked for this season. Final stats on the evening are going to be here in just a moment from now, but I will tell you this, when it was all said and done, 103-84 your score. 
And Jeff McDonald, as we were talking about just a second ago, I mean, really everything went right for the Raiders tonight. There's really not much in the way of criticism. They've got a couple of games left in the Panhandle Conference. After this win over Pensacola, they're on the road at Gulf Coast. Gulf Coast 1-7 in conference, 13-12 and overall. Should be a win. Then they're back home for Chipola. Chipola second in the conference, 5-3, and 22 and four overall. One more on the road at Tallahassee on February 20th before they head to the tournament. But like we mentioned, not a lot to criticize, critique, or say they need to improve on. You play this game every night, Raiders should win out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're they're playing their best ball that I've seen so far right here in these last two ball games, Wednesday night and then tonight. So they're getting, I mean, really just getting on track at the right time of the season down the home stretch, playing fantastic together tonight, putting up 103 um, against a pretty strong, you know, Pensacola State College program. Um, you can't say enough about these Raiders, and there they are tonight up there cutting down these nets. Congratulations on their fifth year in a row being Panhandle Conference champs, and I don't see them slowing down from here, bro. I think they're going to keep playing hard, continue to strengthen, and uh, get ready to go in and, and have a great showing in the FCSAA State Tournament. Eric Vila up on top of the ladder, getting his piece of string to a standing ovation from the Raider faithful. Up goes number 42, Anthony Mason, the other big man, to get him a piece of net to take home as a souvenir as well. A couple of stats to wrap up the game for you. The Raiders from the floor, 38 of 65, 50% from behind the arc, 16 of 32, and a good chunk of that, 6 of 9 from deep went trade digs, and three of those were directly in the face of Pirate defenders. Trey Diggs came to shoot the ball tonight. At your boy, you caught him for five, he gave you six, J-Mac. Yeah, he sure did, man. And I just, I got a lot of faith in that kid. He's just a great young man, local kid. Love him to death. And uh, just talking to him before the game and just said, hey, big man, give me five tonight. He put up six, so I love it. And uh, he's stepping up big time at the right time for these Raiders. So hope to see him continue to contribute in a big way down the stretch and on into the state tournament. I don't know about you, my player of the game this evening is going to go to Chris Duarte. 8 of 10 from the floor, 3 of 5 from behind the arc. Also ended up with 7 rebounds, a pair of assists, and a block to go with it. Chris Duarte, of course, headed to the University of Oregon coming up when his career here is done. Easily my player of the night, Jeff McDonald. Yeah, easily. Again, we can't say enough about Duarte. He just plays such a great all-around game from every end of the, you know, from offensive end to the defensive end of the floor just very consistent always contributing at a high level every night trey Diggs, of course as we mentioned six of nine from the floor all of those shots are three pointers so just a beautiful game effort all night long for that big man we talked about the bench and how deep the uh, how deep the bench is so far for these northwest florida state college raiders you're talking about 42 points this evening for the uh, for the bench of the Raiders. We're going to get Chris Duarte in here in just a minute. We'll talk with uh, get Chris in here. Chris, the player of the game, he's got a couple of autographs to sign. And again, he's a guy you're going to want to keep an eye on as he heads off to the University of Oregon. But he's got unfinished business, Jeff McDonald, here with these Northwest Florida State College Raiders because they have won themselves another conference championship. They got a couple of tournaments heading up, and they are building some momentum on the way to those tournaments. Yeah, absolutely. We're trying to get Duarte over here just for a second so we can talk to him a little bit about the ball game. And, uh, of course, being as popular as he is, he's getting mauled by these young men. So by these fellas out there with the posters wanting some autographs. So here he comes, Chris Duarte. I'm going to hand it over to Chris. Absolutely. We'll get to uh, number five here in just a second. As the strings are getting cut down, joining me here on commentary. Now Chris Duarte, our player of the game tonight. 8 of 10 from the floor, 3 of 5 from the arc. Heck of a game. Congratulations on the fifth conference championship in a row, big man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you feel tonight? I mean, you guys were loose, shooting the ball well. The couple of things that maybe didn't go right the last few games, of which there weren't very many, you guys just seemed like everything was clicking tonight. It's that, I mean... First, I just want to say thank God for this opportunity, man. Uh, and we felt really good about ourselves. Uh, great thing when, you know, and finally we got the conference championship again. 
What did Coach DeMeo say to you guys coming into this game? What was, I mean, obviously a lot of pressure to win this game, finish a conference schedule strong. you got a couple of games left to go, but this one, a lot of pressure to win this thing at home. What did Coach say to you leading up to this game? So our first focus is communicate. Communication, that's our first key. Then, uh, defense rebound, that's the second. And play together, play hard. Talk to me about playing with this team because you guys have a lot of chemistry. One thing that we've really loved to see this year is every time there's a three-pointer, an alley-oop, a big dunk, everybody on the bench is standing up, everybody's yelling. What is it like to play with this group of guys? Have you enjoyed playing with this team? I mean, yeah, yeah. It's really great. I love this team. I love my team. And we got very good, very good chemistry. And I'm really excited about us. Heading to the University of Oregon after this, what are you going to take from playing here at Northwest Florida State with you when you go on the road to D1 ball? What's, what's going to be the memorable thing about playing here in Niceville? Well, well, Coach always said to me, like, play hard, play defense, Chris. You know, go always to the glass, do more than the other ones. Good deal. Chris, Thank congratulations. You. Player of the game, thank you very much. Chris thank Duarte, you. number five for your Raiders. He's headed up to the University of Oregon after his time here at Niceville, and we appreciate his time here with us on Emerald Coast TV. Five-time Panhandle Conference champions are your Northwest Florida State College Raiders and a heck of a game here at Raider Arena. Jeff McDonald, it has been a pleasure to call this team. We, we still got one more game left to go here at home on the 16th of February when we welcome Chipola, second place team in the Panhandle. But regardless of what happens after that game, this team is already conference champions. One thing you want though, don't settle. The season's not done. It's great to be conference champions. It's great to have that string tucked behind your ear headed into the locker room, Jeff McDonald, but there's plenty left to be won for this Raider basketball team. Yeah, this is just one of the boxes that you want to check for the season. And like Coach DeMeo was saying, there's a lot of basketball left to be played. They got to go win a couple more conference games and then head off down to the state tournament and have a huge show in there. Excited about what's to come for this team. Just a great group of young men playing great basketball at the right time. I expect to see them go far into the state tournament. Not a doubt about that. That is going to do it. Live from Raider Arena, 103-84 is your final in your Northwest Florida State College Raider men's basketball team are your 2019 Panhandle Conference champions five times in a row. We've talked all season about how this, is, this place and this community have become a haven for basketball, not just in the Florida Panhandle, but around the country. And this celebration at midcourt shows you that that is a fact. We are going to call it a night here at Raider Arena. My name is Rob Brown. Jeff McDonald, any parting thoughts? No, just once again, man, like you, you talked about this community and basketball and what it means, it's huge. And, and you just sit back here tonight and you enjoy this scenery that we have, just kind of what's going on. And these young men are, are hanging out late and signing autographs and doing the things that you would expect them to do and um, just proud of them in every way possible. So great to be a part of this program with you, Rob Brown, to be here and to call these games. Such a great culture, great environment. and. Uh, couldn't be more excited to be a part of something as special as Raider basketball. We have got one game left for you again on February 16th. The Raiders will welcome Chipola here to Raider Arena. For RJ Murdoch, Max Murdoch, Brandon Purdue, and everybody at EmeraldCoastTV.com, we appreciate you joining us here across the world. My name is Rob Brown. Jeff McDonald is your color guy. We will see you back here in a few days to wrap up the homestand of these Raiders. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We will see you next time. It's Emerald Coast TV. It's Raider basketball. Have a great night.